Welcome back. Well, 33 MPs have signed a letter written to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau calling for Canada to support an immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. Here's a copy of this letter signed by Liberal, Green and NDP MPs, and it condemns the Hamas attacks in Israel before also demanding that Canada join calls for a ceasefire to prevent more civilian lives from being lost in respect of international law. The letter was shared on social media by Scarborough Centre MP Salma Zahid, and it also goes on to say that, quote, Canada must recognize that for generations the Palestinian people have suffered under occupation. Canada must reaffirm its commitment to a free Palestinian state living peacefully alongside a free Israeli state and do all it can to bring the parties to the negotiating table. Joining us for more on this and many more topics, I've got Conservative leader Pierre Polyev joining us live here in studio. Thanks for being here. Great to be with you. 33 MPs send a letter to the Prime Minister, 23 Liberals, some New Democrats, two Greens, no Conservatives. Why? Because the Canadian government cannot force Hamas to carry out a, peace, a ceasefire. Uh, we know that Hamas uh, would instantly return to its terrorist slaughter of civilians uh, the instant that uh, it has the opportunity. Remember that they uh, had full and independent control over Gaza without any Israeli presence in the Gaza Strip uh, just a few weeks ago. And on October 7th, they carried out an unprovoked uh, slaughter of 1,300 innocent civilians, the biggest murder of Jews uh, on any day since the Holocaust. And so there's, uh, you could, you know, this Israeli government could uh, call for a, an, an honor a ceasefire tomorrow. Hamas would still keep slaughtering civilians. So there's nothing the Canadian government can do about that. We have to stop Hamas to protect both the treasured lives of Palestinians and Israelis. Was, were you, did you tell your MPs not to sign this or symbolically do you think it would have, obviously you can't force a terrorist organization, an organization that's been declared a terrorist organization for decades now in this country to abide by it, but symbolically do you think it would have made a difference? What? To sign this letter at least to say, the Americans no. have encouraged and they've had discussions with Netanyahu to you know, undertake the most peaceful approach possible in this situation, while also saying Israel has the right to defend itself, which the Prime Minister here has said on several occasions since this all unfolded, this horrific event two weeks ago. So what is your question? Symbolically, would it have, you know, maybe been a, a gesture to have Conservative MPs join Liberals and New Democrats and Greens and saying, let's call for a ceasefire? Um, it would have been a gesture to Hamas. Uh, to uh, it would encourage Hamas to become even more violent and vicious. Obviously, we uh, our heart breaks for every lost Israeli and Palestinian innocent life. The blame rests entirely with Hamas and their state sponsors in Tehran, the Iranian government, which help orchestrate this attack. We have to defeat the terrorism in order to get to a peaceful two states two state solution that will allow. Israelis to continue to have a Jewish state and Palestinians to have an independent state of their own. Do you feel that the Prime Minister or Foreign Affairs Minister Jolie should have done what the Americans did and actually go to Israel to Tel Aviv to have in-person discussions with Netanyahu, whether it's you know to talk about the situation or to broker uh, safe passages for aid or safe corridors or specifically there's two Canadians being held hostage to have those discussions in person would that have been worthwhile? I don't think that anyone in Israel would really, uh, or any, in any other country, is really interested in meeting with Justin Trudeau these days. He's increasingly just seen as an international embarrassment. He's got an embarrassing uh, dispute now that he's losing with India. The Chinese government is running foreign police stations in our country. He invited a Nazi or allowed a Nazi to be present for the uh, Ukrainian president's speech in parliament. He's getting walked all over by the Americans on softwood lumber and on uh, Buy America policies. Um, he's increased in you know, the five different UG7 countries signed a statement on the Middle East and they didn't even bother to let Trudeau know. So do I think sending Justin Trudeau around the world for meetings would help? No, although I think a lot of Canadians would appreciate if his next trip was a one-way ticket. On that note, uh, let's talk about housing and affordability or lack thereof. 
across the country. A lot of people are struggling to pay their bills, put a roof over their head, uh, pay their mortgages with interest rates going up. When you talk about affordability, uh, the Liberals actually, you know, came forward at the start of the legislature and asked for you to work with them to tackle the issue of housing shortage instead of their quote was having a temper tantrum in the corner. So what would you do, Mr. Polyev, to address housing affordability across the country? Exactly the opposite of what Justin Trudeau has done over the last eight years. Trudeau has doubled housing cost. He's doubled mortgage payments. He, Trudeau has doubled rent payments. He's doubled the needed down payment for a new home. Toronto, after eight years of Trudeau, is now considered the worst housing bubble in the world, according to UBS Bank. Vancouver is the third most overpriced housing market on planet Earth, worse than Manhattan, London, England, uh, Chicago, Singapore. In fact, it now takes 25 years to save up for a down payment in Toronto. Before Trudeau, you could pay off your home in that amount of time. Uh, there's a, a defense lawyer who's had three criminals call her and ask if she can help keep them in jail so they don't have to go out and rent an apartment in the Trudeau housing market. And you can now buy a 20-bedroom castle in Sweden for less than the price of a two-bedroom condo in uh, Kitchener. So That's how would you solve that then? Two ways. One, uh, we need to get rates down. Right now, Justin Trudeau is driving up interest rates with his inflationary deficits that drive up inflation and therefore push the bank to raise rates. I'd cap spending and cut ways to balance the budget and bring down uh, interest rates on mortgage or, uh, holders. Uh, secondly, we need more homes. We have the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7. Uh, even though we have the most land to build on after eight years of Trudeau, and that's because it takes seven to ten years to get a building permit, we have the second slowest permits of any country in the OECD. My common sense plan is to require cities permit 15 percent more home building per year or they'll lose federal infrastructure money. But those that beat my target will get a building bonus. I'll require every federally funded transit station be surrounded by high-density apartments so youth and seniors can live next to the bus and train. I'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land on which we can build, build, build millions of new homes. We need to build homes, not bureaucracy. There's no question we need to build more homes. Mm -hmm. There's not enough places for people to live. And we see that struggle here in Ontario. And Premier Doug Ford uh, even recently talking about the struggle in terms of building 1.5 million homes to get right. to his target. And, of course, we saw the Greenbelt scandal that unfolded. But that's beyond the point. When you talk about withholding federal money, isn't that effectively what the Liberals did here in Mississauga just this week, where Mississauga initially said, we're not going to approve fourplexes. Then the Fed said, OK, then you can kiss 120 million dollars in funding goodbye, which had forced Mayor Bonnie Crombie to then reverse course and approve it to get that federal funding. So did they, did they take your idea here? They have, but in an incompetent and bureaucratic way. The problem is doing it one by one like that, when you've got thousands of municipalities, you can't do that a thousand times with uh, a thousand different municipalities. So what I propose is to put my uh, building incentive right into the law. It'll be a mathematical formula. Every city in Canada will be required to increase home building by 15% per year, if, and it will be measured by houses completed. If they don't, then let's say they miss the target by 10%, they'll lose 10% of their money. If they beat it by 10%, they'll get a 10% bonus. So all the bureaucrats, will, they'll be paid like real estate agents. Right now, you're a realtor, you're paid when you sell a house. I'll pay the cities based on how many houses they complete. So is there infinite funding then? Well, if there was infinite home building, that would be a good problem to have. But it will be less money for those cities that block home building and more money for those cities that allow more home building, where bureaucracies are going to have to uh, deal with a new, uh, a new approach, which is you get paid for results, not for promises, not for photo ops, not for paperwork, but for results. We need to build homes, the homes that haven't been built after eight years of Justin Trudeau, who's not worth the cost. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Opposition Leader Pierre Polyev, thanks so much for being here. Thanks very much. And I'm sure this will be continued very soon, this conversation. Great to be with you.